Okay, I need to press call it. Okay. Uh, so hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the CMSC topological quantum meta seminar. So today we are very happy to have uh, Ken Ma from uh, Northeastern University to tell us about fractal quantum state at um, two fifths past, recent, and the future. Five half, five half. Uh, Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> I can also talk about two fifths if you want. No problems. <laughs> Yeah, the story of five half, but I can also share with you about two fifth. Yeah, <laughs> if you want. Yeah. So yeah. So of course, the first thing I need to uh, thanks Jeff for organizing this, and then I uh, thanks for inviting me to come here and then give you, I uh, mean, give me an opportunity uh, to share with you my limited knowledge on uh, fractional quantum hole physics at the Fielding factor five half. Yeah. So I don't know how many of you have a uh, background in uh, fractional quantum hole physics. Yeah, so this uh, topic is uh, relatively old because um, fractional quantum hole effect at five half, let's say in gallium arsenide hetero structure was actually first discovered in uh, 1987. So it's more like uh, 35 years ago. So, so that's why my sharing today to you may be a little bit different than most of the talks that you have heard about here. It's like a old topic but I want to bring in some new insights and then I'll tell you some more recent development. Yeah. So, and then uh, actually most of the information and uh, most of the details you can find it uh, in this uh, uh, review article, uh, which I wrote with uh, uh, Mike Peterson, uh, Vito Scarola, and also Professor Pan Yang. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So before talking about physics, so I need to uh, share with you uh, the most important slide here. So do you know actually how to move this bar, move this bar away? Uh, yeah. It's a technical question. Yeah, this one. Thing. Ah, cool. Much nicer. Yeah. Yeah. So before talking about the five half state, I need to uh, tell you about the most important thing is uh, actually I learned my quantum world physics from uh, these four professors. Then of course, uh, Dima Feldman, uh, he was my PhD uh, advisor at Brown University. And then most of the work that I will share with you are actually uh, knowledge coming from my PhD studies. And then I also uh, learned a lot of uh, quantum world physics uh, from Professor Kun Yang at the Mad Lab. Yeah. And then when we wrote the review article, I also learned uh, different uh, perspectives of the uh, five half day uh, from uh, Mike Peterson and also uh, Vito Scarola. Okay. And I also need to thank you know, a long list of people who, who gave uh, very, uh, uh, very useful comments and suggestions to uh, the review article. Okay. Yeah. So my sharing will be divided into uh, four different parts. Yeah. So I will first uh, give you some uh, basic idea uh, why we want to study a fractional quantum ball state at the fueling factor five half. Yeah. Because uh, nowadays, actually more than probably 70 or 80 uh, fractional quantum ball states have been discovered at different fueling factors. So a natural question to ask is uh, why we care a lot about this uh, particular fueling factor five half, right? And then after this uh, basic introduction, I will talk about uh, what is uh, what we know about this state uh, from theory, uh, from numerics, and then also experiments. And then I will show you basically there, there are some uh, discrepancies between them. And then I will uh, tell you about more recent uh, experiments and then uh, which uh, possibility or which uh, topological orders is more favorable. And then uh, I will tell you actually what we can learn about from those uh, more recent experiments, okay? And then at the end, if I have time, or if you guys are still alive, not falling asleep, then I will share with you uh, what, uh, what are the, some of the uh, possible open questions and related questions that we can investigate in, in the future, okay? Sounds good? Yeah. So let me <laughs> quickly go through with you what happens here, okay? So if I give you, let's say, two-dimensional electron gas, and then if you uh, lower the temperature, uh, let's say to, uh, depending on which uh, fueling factors, let's say to the milli Kelvin regime or uh, several Kelvin, then um, you know when you have a uh, 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 2D electron gas, and then if you apply a strong perpendicular magnetic field, 
then the energy levels, right, uh, is quantized into a uh, uh, Landau levels, right? But the uh, important feature is that for each Landau level, actually there is a large number of degeneracies. That number of degeneracy equals to the number of magnetic flux quanta passing through the sample, okay? And then the fueling factor is defined by the number of electron divided by the number of magnetic flux quanta passing through the sample, okay? And then on the left here, is uh, actually an experimental result. You see it's uh, from uh, 1987, more than 35 years ago. But uh, if you look at um, these uh, experimental results, you can see two quite interesting features here. First of all, if you look at uh, the whole, uh, whole receptivity, you see that there are several filling factors here. Let's say one, two, three, four, you see a plateau here, okay? And then at the position where you found uh, these plateaus, if you look at the longitudinal resistance, uh, you see a dip, right? And these are the two defining features for observing a quantum hot state or a fractional quantum hot state in the experiment, okay? And then if you are look more closer to this uh, figure, you see that the filling factors actually have uh, two different uh, possibilities. I mean, one, one of the possibilities is that the filling factor is uh, integer, and then for this kind of state, we call integer quantum hot state. And then it's uh, much easier to understand that. And then another kind is like the filling factors are fractions. That's why we call them fractional quantum hot state. Okay. And then if we also look at the fraction more carefully, we see that most of them, actually in this figure, basically all of them, okay, have all denominators, right? And then at the filling factor, let's say one half and uh, three half, you don't see any patrols in the uh, whole resistivity, and then you don't see any dip, let's say, in the longitudinal resistivity. So in this figure, we basically don't see any fractional quantum hot state, let's say, at the filling factor one half or three half. Okay. So the next general question to ask is, can we have a more uh, systematic understanding of why fractional quantum hot state exists? And then if we have that more, uh, more uh, systematic uh, theory, can we make that theory to predict why we don't see any gap state, in particular, fractional compost state, we, why we don't see it, let's say, at the field factor one half uh, or three half, okay? So I think from, let's say, from a solid state physics class or many body uh, physics classes, Let's say if I give you an interacting, let's say, electronic system, sometimes it's uh, much easier for you to study the system or describe the system if you can find a set of uh, quasi particles such that they are weakly interacting, right? And then in fractional quantum physics, we try to think of what kind of particles instead of the original electrons that we can use such that we can turn it to a weakly interacting problem, let's say. The reason is that because uh, in the in the Landau level, basically all the kinetic energy of the electrons are completely quenched. Okay, that's why all the important physics or interesting properties of your physical system actually comes from the Coulomb interaction. But because the kinetic energy is completely quenched, therefore you don't have any small parameter for you to do perturbation theory. Let's say that's why it's a very very challenging problem to study fractional compound. That's why we want to identify some set of particles uh, so that we can turn this problem to a weakly interacting uh, problem, let's say. And then in fractional quantum hole physics, that particle are actually composite fermions. So what is a composite fermion? So generally speaking, a composite fermion, a composite fermion is formed when you attach an even number of magnetic flux quanta to the electron, okay? And here I show you the example that you attach two magnetic flux uh, to, to a electron, okay? To an electron, and then you turn it to a composite fermion, okay? Uh, and then the reason, and then the effect is that because uh, some of the, uh, because uh, some of the magnetic field is already uh, being attached or magnetic flux quanta is being attached to the electron, okay? That's why the effective magnetic field experienced by the composite fermion is actually reduced, okay? And then if you go through the mathematics, you see that the effective magnetic field experienced by the composite fermion is actually satisfied this equation, okay? And then 
let's say for the last few days of filling factor, one third, what does it correspond to? It corresponds to you just fill one and down level for the uh, composite fermion, okay? And then if you fill two, if you completely fill two and down levels for composite fermion, then you will get actually the fractional quantum Hall state at filling factor two fifth that yeah, you mentioned, right? Two fifth, okay? Yeah. And then, uh, but if you if you just uh, if you just rely on this uh, construction, then basically there's no reason for you to get any even denominator fueling factors here. And then if you look at the fueling factor, let's say one half, the effective magnetic field actually vanishes because if you put new equals to one half, then you see B star goes to zero. Then I will ask you a follow up question. Let's say if I give you a bunch of fermions, okay? And then if they don't have, uh, and if they don't feel any magnetic field, let's say on average, then what is the electrical ground state, right? And then from basic quantum mechanics below that, you just want to pile up, you know, the, let's say the single single eigenstate, and then you pile it up and then form a, uh, basically form a Fermi surface, right? Mm -hmm. That's why that state is uh, gapless, right? And then this actually explains why at the fueling factor linear equals to one half, you actually don't see any gap state, okay? And this is actually a very strong support to the so-called hyperlinked width theory, okay? Yeah, but of course, I but of course, this uh, composite Fermi liquid is uh, very different than the usual Fermi liquid, okay? Which I will not go into details in this talk, okay? So the question is, a fractional quantum hole state only observe, let's say, at all denominator filling factors. If the answer is yes, then I shouldn't I shouldn't come to this talk, right? Because my topic is uh, fractional quantum hole effect at filling factor five half, right? That's why there must be fractional quantum hole state which can be found at uh, different denominator filling factors. Okay. Now, if we look at the experimental result here, now if you look at uh, the longitudinal, uh, sorry, this this uh, the the whole receptivity, you see a very, very uh, thin pectro here. But at the same time, and at the same time, you also see a minimum here, right? And as I said, these are the two <coughs> defining uh, features of fractional, fractional quantum Hall states, okay? That's why this figure really tells you that fractional quantum Hall state actually exists at the filling factor five half, right? But uh, in the previous slides, I tried to convince you that uh, the effective magnetic field experienced by composite fermion actually vanishes at one half. And then for five half, it's actually two plus one half, right? And then uh, in the zero order approximation, what we usually do is just we drop that two completely field and down levels. And then if we just focus on that half field and down level, then probably you will still expect it should be a gapless state, right? But here, exper experiment tells us that it is a gap state, okay? So how can we explain it? And then even more strikingly is that after more than 35 years, uh, actually more half, half imager filling factor quantum wall state have been observed in different materials, not, not only in gallium arsenide, let's say in zinc oxide, and then both monolayer and barrier graphene, right? And then actually also in transition metal dihydrogenized, we also see uh, even denominator factual quantum wall state. So it motivates a very natural question is why we actually can have a fractional quantum Hall state at half integer filling factors. Okay, so the key difference here is that in the lowest Landau level, okay, when you really calculate, let's say, uh, uh, the effective uh, interaction between the composite fermions, they are always uh, repulsive, okay? But if you already have a uh, Fermi C, and then you pile up a uh, composite fermion or electrons in the uh, first uh, first Landau level, then actually from the merits, people found that uh, the defective uh, interaction between the composite fermion can actually become attractive, okay? And then due to this uh, weakly attractive uh, defective interaction between the composite fermion, it can trigger uh, a Cooper instability between the composite fermions. That's why these uh, composite fermions can pair up. And then once they pair up, it becomes a gap state. And then this explains why fractional quantum state at the field impact uh, five half can happen, okay? And the key is that the effective interaction between the composite fermions in the lowest Landau level and the first Landau level can be different, okay? Yes, so that's all good. So you mentioned that the numerical is the effective, uh, uh, in fact, the quantum attractive. Yes. Uh, how to, what, how to, 
gets the effective intention in market. They probably look really show the effective innovation. They are calculating like the binding energy when you add two more composite fermions there, and then see whether the energy get lower or higher, something like that. Yeah. Uh, it's like over screening. They claim it's like over screening because the Landau level wave function, I mean, the, the wave function is different in the lowest Landau level and the first Landau level. That's why you can trigger like over screening of the Coulomb interaction such that the effective interaction comes check. Who's the Landau Uh, By Scarola and then also by John Langer train, I think. Yeah. I think there's also another one. Yeah, I can find it out later, I guess. So I try to convince you that uh, we have a fractional quantum pulse state at the fueling factor five half. Then you may ask me why we care about it, right? Why we care about fractional quantum pulse state at fueling factor five half? Or you can actually go one step backward. Why we care about fractional quantum pulse state at all, right? It's just a phase, right? The reason is that because uh, let's say in three dimension, let's say, Three dimension means three dimensional space. Okay, if you are a high energy uh, physics person, here is mean three plus one d. Okay, space time. Okay, and then and then if you talk about this uh, three dimensional space, then the, you only have two kinds of particles. Okay, uh, you can only have uh, bosons or fermions. Okay, the reason is that. Uh, when you exchange uh, two identical particles, okay, it will acquire a phase factor to the wave function. But this uh, phase factor is more like a topological quantity. Uh, the phase factor remains unchanged if you can, uh, let's say, deform this uh, loop uh, smoothly, okay, without cutting cutting it, okay. But now in three dimension, you can always change this loop back to a point, okay. Because uh, let's say you have two particles on the xy plane, okay, you can lift up the loop, let's say in the c direction, and, okay, and then lift it away from the xy plane, and then eventually you can change the loop back to a point, okay. That's why the effect of going around is uh, always uh, have a plus one, but if you exchange it, it's more like a half of the phase, something like that. That's why you can have a plus or minus only, okay. That's why you only have two kinds of particles. They are boson and fermions, okay. And actually, in higher dimension, it's also two cases, okay. But in two D, the story becomes a uh, very different because now I don't have that uh, C direction, okay. Let's say I want to change this loop, okay. Let's say the original loop is the blue solid line here, okay. I can deform it, let's say to the blue dash right here, but I can not pass through this point and then change it to this red dash loop, okay. That's why I can not. Uh, borrow the argument in the three-dimensional case and then say that uh, I only have two possibilities. Now, the phase can be any value, let's say in between zero and pi. And then if it is really a complex number, then we call this one a billion anion. The reason why it's called anion because uh, it is a uh, lighter boson or fermion. And then the phase factor can be any value in between zero and pi, okay? That's why this one is a billion anion. But uh, even more dramatic uh, cases can happen if the ground state of your system has degeneracy, okay? Then when you exchange two identical anions, what, what is accumulated is not only a C number in the wave function. What you can do is like a transformation in this uh, ground state uh, subspaces, okay? Ground state subspace, okay? That's why what you really have is like a unitary matrix here, okay? And then in this case, what you get is something called the long and billion anions. Because when you exchange it, let's say more times, or if you have more than two anions, let's say uh, four anions, and then you do the exchange, but you know that the multiplication between matrices, they are in general, you know, log commutes. That's why it's called long and billion anions. Then you may ask me, okay, why we care about this long and billion anions? The, the reason is that uh, if you can realize long and billion anions, then probably they can give you a fundamental building block of fourth column quantum commutation. Okay, because you know in quantum commutation, a very big hurdle is uh, how to how to uh, avoid, let's say, having an error and then try to do all kinds of error corrections. Right? But you know it's very costly. You need to have a large number of uh, qubits in order to protect a small number of logical qubits that you want to have. But if you but if your system is already protected. Uh, intrinsically by topology, then you probably don't need to do that kind of things. Okay. 
And then I will show you actually in fractional quantum halls, there are five halves, some of the proposal to describe uh, that state actually can host Lonibian anyone. And that explains why we are so uh, interested, let's say, in fractional quantum hall physics, and in particular, why we are so interested in fractional quantum hall states at the field of the five half. Is that okay? Yeah. What do you experimentally measure this uh, non abelian matrices? What you identify? Ah, huh, good question. So I don't know actually how you can really measure this matrix, let's say. But if you do some interferometry experiments, probably you can distinguish these two cases. Yeah. But if you really want to map out this matrix, then I don't have any good idea. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, I can think about it more sure. Yeah. But if you just give an SA transport measurement, I don't know. Like more. Maybe, yeah, you can ask him directly. <laughs> yeah. It's gap, it's gap. Because it's a quantum wall state, that's why it must be gap. I mean, I mean, we can chat about it later. I mean, if you really have comments, no problem. Oh, I, know. I see. Yeah, but I'm quite sure that if it is really quite more say, then the say should be gap. Yeah. 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 Okay. So. Yes, you measure the. This one is more like the whole receptivity. The whole receptivity. That's why it actually has a plateau, but the plateau is not very strong because. This one is like the experiment from like 87. But uh, having this type of is not, you know, it's not, uh, I would say it's not uh, definite enough. That's why we also see the a peak here, but you can never go really go to zero, right? Because in realistic sample, you cannot really have longitudinal resistance going to zero. But uh, if you compare to some some something nearby, you clearly see a peak here. That's why the combination of these two features suggesting that this one is a quantum force state. Yeah. yeah. How can you move annuals? You mean like experiment or? Yeah, ah, good questions. Good questions. At this moment, I would say I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe maybe you need to have some local, you need to generate some local potential difference move, I don't know. Maybe you need to have some chip or box, I don't know. Yeah, but good questions. So you have some idea, Jufu? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, but you also need to know how to move that composite, right? Then, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I would say I don't have a good answer at this moment. Yeah. Yeah. The anions could on under some electric C1, then it's easier to move. But it's new for anion, that's probably harder. New to anion is harder, but that, yes, yes, yes. But but uh, in a Morris state, let's say from Morris state, or actually all the, all the candidates, I mean, all the topological orders that I will show you, the smallest charge is like U over 4, their charge. Mm -hmm. Sparkles, yes. That's why I'm thinking whether you can have, let's say, some local potential and then you know, yeah. Yeah. So, because uh, I'm talking about a uh, fractional compost state at five half, and then we also know that a uh, fractional compost state is like a topological state. That's why it's a uh, low energy defective physics should be described by a topological order. But uh, I, I haven't told you which topological order, right? I only told you that probably it comes from a uh, superconducting pairing between composite fermions. But I even haven't told you actually how to pair up the composite fermions. Okay. So let me take a more historical route, okay, and show you some uh, different possibilities. And then after showing you the different possibilities, I want to share with you uh, is, uh, is there any like a more uniform description between these uh, 
uh, possibilities. And then uh, how can we do different types of experiments uh, to try to identify which one is really realized in the realistic uh, sample. And I will also will show you what we know about, let's say, from uh, exact analyzation uh, from numerics. Okay. So one of the one of the famous uh, possibilities for describing a fractional quantum wall state at five half is uh, so called the Fafian state or the Mori state because uh, it was first proposed by Brad Moore and then we okay that's why it's also called Mori state. Uh, here, what what this wave function actually describes is the half field Landau level for the first 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 uh, Landau level. Okay, I already neglect the two complexity field Landau levels. Okay, I only focus on that uh, half field. Uh, first uh, Landau level, okay. And then this uh, more risk state, uh, it has a wave function in this form, okay. And then if you, if you first, okay, if you first ignore this uh, Fafian factor, if you just focus on this uh, Joshua factor, it looks like very similar to the Laughlin state, right? In Laughlin state, let's say filling factor one third, then the exponent is free, okay. That's why in that case, when you exchange CI and CJ, where CI is like uh, the position of electrons, okay? And then if you exchange them, you get a minus sign, no problem at all. But here, if you don't include this uh, Fabian factor, okay? If you don't include it, and then you exchange CI and CJ, what you get is actually plus one, okay? Then it will be problematic, okay? That gives you one of the hand waving arguments why I need to have something extra in front of this uh, gradual factor, okay? Mm -hmm. The reason why I get two here is uh, coming from the fielding factor one half for my uh, first uh, Landau level, okay? And then what does this uh, Fabian factor actually means is that uh, this Fabian uh, factor is actually coming from a P plus IP uh, pair between composite fermions, okay? Because uh, this gradual factor already implements uh, flux attachment, okay? That's why what I'm talking about is more like composite fermion. And then um, uh, this uh, Fabian factor actually is a P plus IP, the DCS wave function you can treat as. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. It really depends. I mean, some literature we call, it, call, call this like P minus IP, but yeah, it's just a convention. Okay. I usually call P plus IP. Okay. And then uh, this is uh, from the perspective of wave function. And then from the field theory perspective, then I want to understand what kind of uh, anions that I may have, right, in, in this uh, topological state. And then actually this wave function was initially proposed by the conformal field theory construction, okay? Mm -hmm. The field, the conformal field theory is, uh, is actually the Ising CFT, which have uh, three primary fields. That is the identity, the uh, by runner fermion and then this field, okay. And then actually I will say all the interesting properties, let's say of the anions in the Morris state actually comes from this sigma, okay. Because this sigma, when you when you feel them, okay, you have uh, two possible outcomes, okay. And these two possible outcomes basically tells you that uh, any anions uh, with this sigma attached, then it's uh, non-abelian basically. Yeah, due to this uh, interesting uh, fusion group, okay. But we also know that, okay, uh, this is not good enough because uh, here I don't have any charge here, but we know we really have a uh, quantized electrical hole conductance, okay. That's why we must have additional degree of freedom that gives you the correct electrical hole conductance. And that, that one actually comes from the chiral Bose mode, okay. That chiral Bose mode is just the uh, simple abelian one CFT, okay. And then uh, this age is just uh, you you calculate like the radius of compatibilization, but doesn't matter. The key point is that now you actually need to have two kinds of degree of freedom. One is the usual U1 uh, chiral Bose mode, and then the non-abelian part actually come from the I and CFT. Is that okay? Yeah. And then why is so interesting? Because uh, now if I have a uh, two U over four, let's say a uh, quasi holes. And then if you want to um, uh, move one of them around another, let's say in a full loop, then the phase factor that you will uh, accumulate, I mean, not you, but I mean the wave function will accumulate, will depend on the fusion channel between uh, these two, these two uh, uh, quasi particles, okay? Because uh, sigma cross sigma can be I and psi, okay? Let's say if the fusion channel is identity, then it turns out the, it turns out the, phase that you will get is actually zero, okay? 
uh, this web this web part actually comes from uh the icing CFT part and then this uh, blue one actually comes from the blue one okay the reason why I need to separate them is that I will uh in the next slide I will introduce you another possible candidate that is the anti fafian the anti fafian then you will see the red part actually are different from the fafian okay. and then let's say if we go back to the Morris state if the fusion channel between these two uh, policy particles, let's say it's a, uh, it's a fermion, then actually the phase factor that the wave function will accumulate is actually different from this one. Yeah. Okay. Now I just uh, told you one of the possibilities that is uh, the Morris state. And then let's say in the half field Landau level, let's say you don't have any Landau level mixing, which is uh, this, which is defined as the ratio between the Coulomb interaction and then the uh, the cyclotron gap. Okay, suppose suppose that our uh, Landau level mixing parameter is uh, exactly zero. Okay, then for the that half field Landau level, you have an exact particle hole symmetry. You just imagine, let's say I have a half cup of water. You may say it's like half fill or half empty. Okay, the same story here. So that's why if we really consider this uh, extreme case, let's say uh, the Landau mixing parameter is uh, strictly zero, then particle hole symmetry is an exact symmetry. If it appears the case, then the Morris state is a possible candidate. It also means that it's particle hole conjugated should be another promising or is another possible candidate, okay? And this motivates people, let's say in 2007, uh, they consider another possibility called the anti fafian which is the particle hole conjugate of the fafian state. Yeah. But uh, I, I also want to uh, tell you that actually what is the uh, actual range of the Landau level mixing parameter, let's say in experiment, okay? In experiment, actually that uh, car part, so, uh, it's somewhere in between 0 0.5 and uh, 2.5, okay? That's why it's not that small in this sense, okay? But uh, we can still treat this one, this anti fafian state or anti fafian order as a possible candidate, okay? So which one is uh, favorable? I cannot tell you, okay? It's uh, God chooses it or the, the nature chooses it, okay? Okay, and then I also, I also uh, told you that uh, when I consider anti fabian and then if I uh, consider the U over four uh, quasi particles or quasi holes, when you move uh, one of them around another, I told you that actually the U one part, uh, the phase, the contribution to the phase vector to the wave function is exactly the same as uh, in the Fabian state. But the phase vector coming from the Lonnie-Beaton part actually uh, is uh, different from the Fabian. So, so that's why that's why this is an other uh an other way or an other evidence that this anti fabian order is actually not the same as the fabian one. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Yes, it's possible. Yes. And actually, actually, both Landau level mixing and disorder, I think both of them are important. If you really, let's say, want to pin down which one is more like energetic, pretty favorable. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, I get the anti fusion phase from, from the fusion phase by hypercomputation. You can do so. Yes. And uh, I will also tell you probably a more systematic way to do it. Yeah, maybe I didn't really put down mathematics, but I will try to introduce you, let's say, formalism. And then actually, if you go to the paper, you can find a more systematic way to do it. Yeah. Okay. Now I tell you like a uh, Fabian, anti-Fabian, and then I need to introduce you the third Fabian type of state, okay, which is called pH Fabian. And pH Fabian stands for particle hole Fabian, okay? So here I want to... Uh, make a statement is like actually the pH Fabian does not require particle hole symmetry to stabilize it. Okay, this one is important. Okay, this one is important. Okay. And then uh, why why was this uh, pH Fabian order uh, being introduced is that uh, people uh, we consider the questions of half field and down level. Okay, as I said, if if we don't have a Landau level mixing, the half field and down level have has an exact uh, pH symmetry, but uh. But, uh, but if you look at uh, 
the famous uh, high penalty risk theory describing the CF liquid in half field Landau level. What they are doing is that they attach a magnetic flux pointer to an electron. Okay, that's why they don't have an explicit particle symmetry in the construction. Okay, so that's why Dan Son in 2015 tried to reformulate, let's say, or uh, introduce another another theory to see whether uh, whether uh, one can incorporate that particle symmetry explicitly. Okay, that's why it leads to the theory called the Dirac composite fermions. Okay. And then uh, after introducing this uh, Dirac composite fermion, then the natural question is, of course, also asked uh, what kind of a uh, pairing state or pairing uh, threshold composite state that one can get, okay? And it turns out if you pair them to the lowest uh, angular momentum channel, that is uh, the S-wave pairing, what you get is actually log the Fafian, log the anti fafian What you get is actually something called the pH Fafian. Okay. And this is basically, Historically, why people also consider this pH Fafian. And then, um, if if I, I mean, if you ask me to give you, let's say, wave function, because let's say you do a numerical simulation, okay, I tell you all the field theory description, basically, basically, I basically tell you nothing, okay. What you what you really do is, let's say, after exact analyzation, you want to do some overlap between your result and then a, let's say, model wave function. That's why I really tell you a possible wave function. And then uh, for this uh, pH uh, function, if you use the uh, HLR theory description or the ordinary composite fermion uh, theory, then it corresponds to P minus IP pair, actually. But for the function that I told you like two slides before, it's a P plus IP. So the difference actually is uh, inside the function factor, right? So for the function state, this function factor is like one over C I minus C J which is a homomorphic. That's why I describe a wave function in the lowest Landau level, basically. But here, it's like one over CI bar minus CJ bar, where bar basically means uh, complex conjugation. That's why this, this part is uh, anti-homomorphic. That's why we load this wave function before this projection is actually not describing any wave function in a single Landau level or in the lowest Landau level. That's why you need to do so. So you need to do the lowest Landau level projection here. Okay, And this is one of the possible wave functions for this uh, PHR Fabian. Okay. And then uh, similar to Fabian and anti Fabian, this uh, PH Fabian order is also Lonepillian, but here I don't have space. And then uh, I, I think I can just tell you is that the annual statistics is actually different from both Fabian and anti Fabian. Okay. Yeah. So these are the three Fabian state we usually focus on. Well, is, is it just the end of the possibilities? Actually, no, okay? Mm -hmm. I just tell you about Fabian, anti Fabian, and pH Fabian, okay? So actually, let's say if you look at the historical development, actually, you also have a, a billion orders for, for the possibilities. Let's say K equals to A, hyphen 51, uh, it's a particle conjugate, or hyphen woman three. All these four are actually describing uh, fractional compost state, may describe fractional compost state as a filling factor one half, Five, huh? yeah. But even in the London Pilum sector, this, this uh, does not only end at Fabian, end at Fabian, or pH Fabian. Okay. So you may ask me, so given that there are so many possibilities, okay, can you suggest, let's say, a more uniform theoretical description among them? And then if you can find that description, can you tell me what is the, let's say, more universal or more common feature, let's say, for the bulk physics and also the edge physics? Okay. And, and these questions actually motivates, motivate us to look at this, uh, this more uniform description. And then uh, we eventually find out that actually, if you assume, assume the composite, if you assume the composite fermions are completely spin polarized, okay? And then if you assume the five half state actually comes from uh, chiral BCS pairing, then if you look at the Hamiltonian, you see that actually that hematomian is exactly the same as what Kikaf has studied. That's why uh, it motivates us whether those uh, these uh, possibility also satisfy the something called sixteen four way description. Okay, and then I will tell you what it means. Okay, and then uh, more information you can find in this paper. Yeah. This sixteen four way doesn't require composition. Doesn't require. Doesn't require. But uh. 
but it's like uh, if you if you so the original the original one is actually in the KTF, in the uh KTF model, right? It's like has a second stop and then you have different different spin interaction, different spin interaction. Actually, in this original proposal, it's log composite fermions thing, right? But if you believe that composite fermions that they are completely spin provides, and then if you want to describe what are the possibilities of those chiral pairing state, then it turns out the structure is the same. Yeah. So so let's say let's say I look at those uh, different possibilities. That's what. Right. I mean, if you if you assume if you assume the if you assume the uh. Five half states from BCS pairing, but at the same time it's chiral L wave pairing. And then you write down that uh, BCS hematomia, and then you express it that's in my runner fermion operators. Yeah, I can't I can't remember the exact details, but there is some way that you can compare it with the with the model that KTF uh, constructed. And then this, I think the mathematics is I mean the mathematical structure is the same. Yeah. Yeah. So this uh, is the sixty building way. Can I say order? No, no, just no. I mean, it's uh, like uh, there, there are some assumption there. It's just like class, class only. Yeah. Okay. So, so let's say, let's say, uh, I only focus on this uh, chiral L wave pairing. What does it mean? Is that uh, the superconducting uh, all the parameter takes this form, okay, and then um, and then if we really study, let's say, uh, because we go we go from previous uh, literature, what are the annual statistics? Let's say for Fafian and Fafian, we also know what are the statistics? Let's say for high frame fifty one state, okay, and then it turns out the neutral sector, okay. As I said, you always have a U one sector for the charge one, okay, but if you only focus on that uh, neutral sector. It turns out uh, that uh, braiding statistics, the fusion rules, and the types of anion, actually, all of them agree with the 16 fold way. That's, that's motivates us to see whether there is this 16 fold way also holds in uh, other uh, poss possibilities. Okay. And then uh, this one is more like uh, what, is the, what are some of the common features, let's say, for the bulk. Then the next question to ask is, uh, what are, what are the uh, common features or more universal features for the edge, right? And then actually for the edge, as I said, you you always have a uh, U1 uh, that chiral goes mode, which that gives you the correct electrical hole conductance. And then depending on which uh, parent channel you select, okay, for the possibility, it generates a different number of uh, Majorana fermions on the edge, okay? And then these Majorana fermions, uh, they may actually travel in the same direction as the Bosmo, or they can move in the opposite directions. Okay, so let's say for the uh, Fafian state, I will probably show you in the next slide. Uh, the the Bosmo and the Marana fermion modes, they are actually moving in the same direction. Another feature that I will use is like uh, for two uh, Marana fermions moving in the same direction, I can combine it to a usual fermion, and then I can bosonize it. Okay. That's why for two mile run a fermion mode in the same direction, you can just replace it to one neutral both mode. That's a my run a fermion here is neutral. Okay. That's why when you combine them to a corresponding both mode, that both mode is neutral. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say here is that um the more universal feature is that for all the I mean for for the possibilities that I shown you in the last slide, you may understand it is like uh, coming from the chiral L wave pairing between composite fermions. And then for the bulk, yeah, the, the anion types, uh, the braiding rules, fusion rules, the statistics, you can predict them from the 16 fold wave results. And then for the edge, uh, the, the common feature is that you must have like uh, a, a single charge mode, let's say moving, moving downstream, and then depending on which uh channel you have then you have a uh, different number of my runners okay okay so is, is there an intuitive way to understand the number 16. so maybe juven you can answer that by right? more mathematical questions okay. 
我当你从那头谁，因为他们走，我他们就不管，对，嗯，对，对，对，嗯，然后就不是在呃呃批发在，他会为做很多的那种，他们会卖花，所以说是这样，嗯，那这边然后。Yeah, we can also share this too. Yeah, and also one more. Yeah, and also one. Ah,、uh, sorry. Ah, in case of I are feeling um, so the fracture church is no idea at you. Ah, depends on what kind of quasi particles you are talking about. Yeah, let's say for five half day. And then for those possibilities that I show you, the smallest charge of quasi particles that you can have is e over four or minus e over four. Then for these kind of things, they are not in a billion because ah、uh, that that neutral sector. I mean, not the neutral sector, but you can because in quantum physics, when you want to let's say uh, create a quasi particle, what you have is actually a conformal field theory operators. Okay,、mm -hmm. so the charge part is described by vertex operator, but you also have this Ising CFT. That is I psi or sigma, but for e over four, that I think CFT part is that sigma. That's why that e over four quasi particles are non abelian. But if you talk about let's say quasi particle with charge e over two, then that charge e over two anions are actually abelian.、Mm -hmm. So it really depends. You may also think of like electron. Electron you can also treat as like one of the anions, right? But but electron must be abelian.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it really depends on what kind of quasi particles you are talking about. So as I, as I promised,、uh, so if you look at our different possibilities, their edge structures are different depending on which uh pairing channel you want to have. Let's say for the Fabian, this is uh the edge structure. The reason why I show you this because it will be useful when I discuss our experiment. Okay, and then here I just、uh, show you actually the edge structure for that uh half field and down level. Okay, uh there 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 are actually additional two two charge modes. Okay. Ah,、uh, coming from that two completely few and down levels, okay. But I just don't care about that. Okay, I just focus on that half few and down level.、Okay? That's why for the Fabian, I only have ah、uh, one ah、uh, both small and one my one. Okay, they move in the same direction. But for pH Fabian, I also have one both small, one my one. The loud and my one is going upstream. Upstream means that ah、uh, it it is ah、uh, in the opposite direction as the ah、uh, charge point. So if you look at anti-fabian here, actually I jump steps. Okay, ah,、uh, actually it's like a one one charge mode actually going to the right. Ah,、uh, there is an other charge mode going to the left, and then the marijuana going to the left. But you know, in relax in relax text sample, you also have disorder, and then this disorder couple that to kind of propagating edge depending on ah、uh, which are fixed point you are talking about. Let's say in the disorder dominate fixed point, then a better description is like you just have one single charge mode, ah,、uh, going downstream, and then that that the remaining one all become neutral, and then you can view it as three mile runs moving to the left. So that's that that's basically now、uh, show you some examples of the edge, ah,、uh, the action of the edge that I showed you in the previous slide.、Okay. But for a billion orders, what is the biggest difference that? There, there is low unpaired marijuana here. So let's say for the hyperion fifty one, then I only have one ah、uh, charge mode and one ah、uh, one neutral mode. Okay, but this neutral mode actually is ah、uh, boson. Okay, that's why I don't have any unpaired marijuana here. And this one is very important when I discuss a thermal hole and buttons experiment. Yeah, a billion state can also exist in monolayer system. Ah,、uh, it depends, right? I mean, let's say if you talk about ah、uh, fractional 
quantum mode state at filling factor one half. Okay. Uh, let's say in monolayer system, we usually don't see any gap state, but let's say if you have a very wide gallium SNI quantum well, actually you see factual quantum mode state at one half. And then there are some proposal trying to, you know, a little bit debate whether the high point three one is favorable or the five point is favorable or actually none of them is favorable. And then it's uh, it's like from numerical simulation, it really depends on the competition between interlayer tunneling and the interlayer interaction. So it's possible, it's possible that this high point three one state can be realized. Let's see in five layer system. Yes. Okay. So I show you different edge, uh, structures, but all are mathematics or a theory, okay? But we do physics, okay? So we know physics is more like, a, can only be checked from experiments, right? And then what is the nature of the materials? The only way that you can answer is do an experiment, okay? So what kind of experiment that uh, one usually do to distinguish uh, different topological orders, right? Here, I just show you two of them, okay? Uh, later, I will show you the third one, okay, but just focus on these two first. The first one is the so-called quasi-particle tunneling. It's like this one is my uh, quantum pore sample, and then I make a level constriction here, which is called a quantum point contact here, and then uh, at this uh, quantum point contact, quasi-particle can tunnel uh, from one edge to another edge, okay? And then it will generate a uh, tunneling current, okay? And then at low temperature, okay, if you calculate the, or you measure the tunneling conductance, then actually it scale with the temperature in this, this way, okay? 2G minus two. And then it, in the experiment, you actually measure two things at the same time. You want to measure this, the charge of your positive particle participating in this tunneling, and also what is, <coughs> sorry, and also what is the, Tunneling is equivalent to G. The, the reason why people measure this um, tunneling exponent G is that this exponent G actually depends on the charge of positive particles and also the edge structure. Okay. Let's say, okay, let's say, let's say if this uh, positive particle is U over 4, then a general argument is that if your edge structure has more edge mode, okay, let's say if I compare Fafian and anti fafian okay? anti fafian I have like one charge mode and three marijuana. But for Fafian, I have one charge mode and one marijuana. So in general, if the edge has more edge modes, then this value of G will be larger. If, if in both cases, U over four is the particle participating in the tunnel, okay? But there is some subtlety because uh, you also have like U over two quasi particles. And in some cases, actually the quasi particle uh, participate I mean, that quasi particle tunneling here probably is not your four, maybe your over two, then the story will change and then become more complicated. Okay? But there is still some hope for you to use this one and then uh, to see actually what edge structure is more promising. And then other one, other experiment that people do is something called the upstream neutral mode. What they are doing is like, uh, I have a source and then I have a probe and then I have a amplifier here. Let's say uh, this blue line is the downstream charge mode, okay? And then uh, from experiment, people know that there is a hot spot at the back of the source. Let's say if your S structure has some upstream mode, then this upstream mode will be hit up by this hot source, and then it will propagate. But this upstream mode, let's say it's neutral, then it doesn't carry electrical current, but it still carry energy, okay? So let's say if this upstream mode exists, then it, it is being hit up by this uh, hotspot, and then when it propagate to the probe, then it will generate excess short noise here compared to the case with no upstream mode. Okay? That's why if you see excess noise here, and then if you can do some control experiment showing that that upstream mode is actually topological instead of actually constructed one, then you can differentiate, let's say, for five and anti five. Okay? For five and they don't have, uh, it, it does not have any upstream mode. Let's say for anti fafian it has, okay? That's why uh, this uh, upstream neutral mode experiment may also give you useful information. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, we also uh, list out uh, what are the experimental signatures for different possibilities because we identify a more uh, unified description of different uh, possibilities here. So let's say if we calculate that uh, tunneling ex exponent, 
by assuming that the positive particle, that tunnel actually has charged you before, okay? We can find this result. This is a theoretical prediction, okay? And then uh, whether, whether that edge has upstream mode, okay? Cross means that it doesn't have upstream mode. And then this one, I will, I will talk more about that. It's the thermal hole conductance, okay? Yeah, so let me tell you, let's say for gallium arsenide, I feel in fact a five half electron density around three times 10 to the power 11 electrons per centimeter square. So what experimental results that we can have, let's say before talking about thermal horn conductance, okay? So first thing is that people really find that the positive particle is U over four expected, okay? Because all the possibility has charged U over four, probably don't tell you much about how to identify which one is, is uh, being realized. But it's very important check, okay? Uh, then people also found that the composite fermion uh, has been polarized, yeah. And other, and other information is that when they measure the value of G, they found that it's actually 0 0.4, but uh, the experimental value is like an upper bound because uh, in that uh, level construction, you also apply cooling interaction, and then probably you may also have edge reconstruction. All that effect will increase the value of G that you measure. That's why the G that you measure in the experiment is like upper bound. Okay. And then they, they have an upper bound roughly like 0 0.4. Okay. And then when they do a neutral mode uh, experiment, they actually see topological option neutral modes. Now, now, so uh, from numerics, okay, from numerics, Fafian and anti Fafian are usually favor, okay. But let's say, let's say we want to interpret it's this experiment. Let's see what happens. I told you that this G is an upper bound, right? Zero point four. If you look at Fafian, okay, right. But if you look at anti Fafian, it seems that too large, right? This zero point five seems to be too large. But now, then you may say, okay, no problem. Then I just say, okay, the five half states probably describe a five in states, no problem. But now we also see that there are topological upstream neutral modes. But if you look at Fabian, there are, there are low, there, there is low upstream neutral modes. Fabian cannot explain both experiments naturally. You can always find some, you know, more hand waving or I mean, more complicated arguments to explain any type of experiments, right? I mean, uh, more, more complicated arguments to explain any type of experiment, but if you want to explain it, let's say, naturally, at the same time, it is true. It seems like Fabian or anti Fabian cannot explain. Yeah. So what happens? We can uh, briefly summarize, like uh, uh, particle charge, spin polarization, G, and the uh, upstream mode, which of them are coming from the from, uh, Quantum quantum tunneling and uh, which quantum yeah, sure. So for, for for quantum for for the tunneling is like this one and, and this one. Yeah, actually in the tunneling they also me measure short noise, but they actually did some fitting and then when they do the fitting, they actually fit this Q and G at the same time. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly. Yeah, that's why these tools and, and you can see they, they come from the same same reference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This one are more from positive particle tunneling experiments. And then this one, I think, is to measure geometric resonance of that Fermi C, something like that. Yeah. And then for this one, is the upstream short noise experiment that I showed you in the previous slide. Yeah. And then they also compare it to seven, seven over three, the fluid factor, because that depth fluid factor uh, is a strong belief that there should be low upstream mode. And then they can compare like the noise spectrum and see whether that, that, uh, that noise, let's say, observed at five half is whether it's from edge reconstruction or from topological origin. And they claim or they can conclude that it's really topological. That's why it seems like light of Fabian or anti Fabian can explain both naturally. Okay? But of course, as I said, you can always, always make more complicated arguments to explain any type of experiment. Right? Mm -hmm. So, so we'll do the legal will. Is how to differentiate exactly age reconstruction and uh, I will not uh, go into the detail, but uh, this this reference, yeah, it's like they need to compare it to other quantum pulse states. Yeah. So so far, I just tell you what happens if I just focus on quasi particle tunneling. I just focus on uh, upstream neutral mode. Yeah. And then I also need to tell you about a little bit about what numerical, not what numerical simulation tells us. Actually, actually, at the beginning, people 
uh, are very, how you say, a little bit skeptical about Maury's date because it's too good to be true, okay? But uh, in 1998, um, Moore uh, published a very, very important work. Is uh, really showing that, let's say, at least in uh, spherical geometry, uh, the, uh, he observed uh, the characteristic of uh, five year stage. Yeah, that's why it motivated a lot of numerical study afterwards to see whether it is the case. Yeah, and then uh, more recent numerical works are uh, actually try to uh, uh, have a more realistic, let's say, pseudo potential because. Uh, if you also include, let's say, Landau level mixing effect, the pseudo potential not only two body, you also have three body, but though you cannot include infinite many pseudo potential, you need to stop at some point. But uh, people find that if you, let's say, include more three body pseudo potentials, then the anti fafian state uh, actually, uh, is actually favorable, let's say, in numerics. Okay. Yeah, but, but the message here is that. It seems like in numerics, either the Fabian or anti-Fabian is favorable. Yeah. That's the main message that I want to convey to you in this slide. Yeah. yeah, probably I need to speed up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so experimental people now consider DH function is realizable. So we can you repeat? Uh, PH function is um, so, if certain people consider that PH function is almost realized uh, state. Yeah, I will. I will actually discuss why. Yes, I, I can. Uh, I can repeat once more here. If you want to combine, let's say these four findings, right? Numerically, people think that the Fafian or anti Fafian are probably the two most promising candidates. Let's say. But if you really want to explain this for, let's say, at the same time, naturally, it seems like neither of them can do that. That's why they want to come up with other proposals. But, but here, I just tell you two types of experiments. That's why now I want to show you the third type, that is the thermal hole and duct tanks. Okay. Yeah. And, and people, why? And, and, and why people nowadays, a group of people think, think that pH 5 is probably favorable, is that we come from this experiment. Okay. So, in, uh, so besides doing a quasi particle tunneling and uh, upstream neutral mode experiment, another thing that uh, people can do is a uh, thermal hole and duct tense experiment. Of course, it's very difficult to do, but uh, in 2018, the Weizmann Institute group succeeded, okay? And then uh, let me try to, let me uh, remind you what it is. Okay, so the thermal hole inductance uh, uh, will take uh, this form. Okay, what it means is like if you send a, if you send, I mean, if you have a uh, temperature gradient here, then you will generate heat current, and then uh, the ratio between these two quantities, the so called thermal hole inductance. And then this thermal hole inductance, the important thing is that it is proportional to the central charge of the edge of your sample. This C is the central charge, okay? This one is a, let's say, uh, probably I should put that a T here, sorry about that, yeah. But the important point here is that depends on the central charge. And then for each both mode, okay, the central charge is one. And then for each Majorana mode, the central charge is one half, mm -hmm. okay? And then if you have uh, more than one edge modes, then how do you deal C, you do addition and subtraction. If these moles move in the same direction, then you add them up. If they move in opposite direction, you do the subtraction. Okay. But here, there is an assumption. I assume that two moles in opposite direction, they already firmly equilibrated. Okay. That's why I can do the subtraction. Okay. This is a strong assumption. Okay. And I will explain to you why this assumption probably is important if you want to really understand the nature of the state. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's see what the result is. Uh, this both mode, the central charge is one. Oh, the photo is the Reisman Institute group. Yeah, yeah. I should also actually add that Dima Feldman here. Yeah, yeah. It's a late, I think it's a later paper in 2018. Yeah, it's the Reisman Institute group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it's this paper. Is this yeah. yeah. So what we observe is actually 2.5, let's say around 20 millikelvin, right? It's 2.5. So 
Then we go back, let's say several slides before, 2.5. Right. If you believe, if you believe the edge of the sample is already fully equilibrated, firmly equilibrated, yeah, two on five. Upstream mode, yes. Whether it is smaller than zero point four or G, yes. Okay, not fully firmly equilibrated. Does this tell you upper bound or lower bound? I will also talk about that. Yes, that's why people also questions about whether that thermal conductor experiment really tells you it's pH fucking or not. Yeah, I will, I, will, I, will, I will discuss this in more details, yes. But if you really, okay, believe, I mean, the, the experiment is carefully done, okay? But let's say we, we really assume the edge is uh, fully thermally equilibrated, then that 2.5, you see, can, can only be explained by pH fucking. But of course, it's an assumption, okay? Yeah. That's why people can always ask, maybe your sample is actually not fully equilibrated, right? Yeah. So actually here, it's actually there are two features here. I just tell you one, okay? One feature is 2.5 or 120 millikelvin. Another feature is this, this thermal horn that can actually shoot up, okay, when you lower the temperature. I will also explain to you why it shoots up, okay? These features equally important, okay, to this two one five actually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what this experiment tells us, okay, two one five thermal conductors. Okay, first possibility is if you believe the edge is pH Fabian, then how about the bulk? I mean, it's a topological system, right? We have a bulk edge correspondence. Okay, if you believe in bulk edge correspondence. Uh, no mathematical records proof, okay? If you believe in that, okay, then I can claim, okay, the edge is pH Fabian, then the bulk is also pH Fabian. Then, and, okay, we, we solve the problem. At least one of the problems of five half state, okay? And, yeah. Then you may ask, okay, pH Fabian, if it is really the case, then why people never see it, let's say in numerical simulation? It's a good question to ask, right? So that's why there are different proposals, right? Uh, being introduced. One of the proposals is uh, probably is due to Landau level mixing, let's say, because in because uh, in numerics, it's very hard for you to really treat LLM very, very well. Okay. Another is uh you know in realistic sample must have disorder, but in numerical simulation, it's very challenging for you to really improve disorder. And then, of course, you may also think, okay, probably both LLM and disorder are important mm -hmm. to stabilize the pH graphing, right? These are some of the proposals that people have introduced, okay? And then doing numerics, not totally possible, but challenging, okay? But challenging. I will also show you some re more recent development of what happens, let's say numerics. <laughs> But this is uh, one of the explanation or one of the interpretations of that 215 in thermal hall and Dutton experiment. Now, now, okay, let's say the edge is pH Fabian. Does it really mean that the bow should be also pH Fabian? It turns out probably not, okay? So there are three paper actually coming, I mean, coming out like the days are very near to each other, also in uh, December 2018 or the end of November 2018. Okay. What they claim is like, okay, I believe, let's say the edge is really pH Fabian, but in the bowel, can I have something like this? Okay, let's say locally, particle hole symmetry is broken, let's say. Let's say I have uh, different um, regions, okay, different domains, okay. Maybe one of the, maybe in this domain is, let's say, anti Fabian, and, and then this domain is Fabian, okay. And I have all these uh, Fabian and anti Fabian domain, okay? Then the consequence is like, I will now have four my random modes, let's say, running on this, this uh, domain wall. Okay? And then depending on the population of these four my random vertices, the edge can be in different phases, okay? You can see the phase diagrams, they conclude uh, difference. But the message here is that, 
let's say if the bulk you have five n and have five n domain walls, and then depending on how these four Majorana fermion behave, it is successful. Then there is a chance that on the edge you actually see pH rising. Okay. Right. Because the thermal horn that has only probably edge, okay. So this this is the second interpretation, and actually Juven Juven is the you know, is the, the author of this paper. Okay. So if you have any question about face diagram, ask him. Okay, don't ask me. Yeah. Then the third interpretation is as I as I said, the thermal horn that has, uh, thermal horn that has is proportional to the less than charge, but this statement actually is under the assumption that uh, if you have kind of propagating at most, you already assume it's a fully thermally equilibrium. How about if this assumption breaks down? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that also tells you that, okay, in numerics, the 5N and anti 5 n is usually, okay, the more, you know, have more support. Okay. So that's why people come up uh, with uh, different mechanisms. Let's say, can I explain that thermal hole and ducting experiment by having anti fucking order? Let's say the reason is that if you can still recall the anti fucking order, uh, it has uh, one downstream force mode and then it has some upstream modes, right? And then, if let's say if your sample is not long enough, let's say if your sample is not long enough, then these two, I mean, this uh, kind of propagation modes. They don't need to fully liberate. Then, then maybe can I use the black box here? Hey Jeff, can I use yeah, the yeah, black yeah. So, Let's say for anti fabian So you have this one. Okay, you have both mode, and then you have, let's say, uh, another outlet mode. So if they are fully equilibrated, you also have these uh, two, two integer modes. Okay, let's say if they are fully equilibrated. Then what you have is like three minus uh, one bar. Then you get one half for C. Okay. If you if you if if you believe the edge is uh, fully equilibrium, but let's say if, if they if there's no any equilibrium, okay. Then what you actually get is. So I can draw here. So that's the room. Uh, audience can see. Um, yeah, I see. I see. Yeah, you want to use this one? Can okay. I draw here? Okay, I can draw. Can you draw there? Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. So let's say for anti-fabian, okay, you have uh, you have two integer mode coming from the two completely field and down levels. Okay, you also have another one for the half field and down level, and then you also have one upstream neutral modes, and then you have one upstream my runner. Okay. And then if it is a fully equilibrated, then you can calculate the less central charge. The less central charge is just a one, 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 that is free. And then this one is one plus half, that is one, one half. But if they, if it is a fully equilibrated, then you have something like minus 0.5, that's 0.5. But let's say if they are totally locked, I mean, there's low equilibration, then what you get is that we, you need to add them up. That's why it's four point five. So if there's if okay, if there is low uh full thermal equilibration, actually you may observe any value in between 0. 0.5 and four point five. Okay. I mean one point five and four point five. So why you add them if they're not in the equilibrium? Hmm? Why, why you add them? Oh, because uh because uh, actually you have two edges in the same sample. I mean, in, in one of them, let's say in the sample, okay, you actually have upper edge and lower edge, okay? Energy always come from the hotter part to the colder part. If they, if, if, if one of this, I mean, if they are not equilibrated, then let's say for the, for the upper edge, you have the contribution from, let's say these three modes, okay? And then for the lower edge, you have contribution from these two. That's why you add them up. But if they already equilibrate, then the temperature of them are the same already, right? That's why you subtract. Roughly speaking, it's like that. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is the third interpretation. It's like, okay, maybe your sample not long enough, uh, not fully thermal equilibrated, then I may 
probably explain it by anti yeah. yeah. And you see there are uh, different mechanisms to do that, okay. And then I also tell you like the second feature of the experiment is that not only 2.5 at 20 millikelvin, if you go to lower temperature, okay, then you will see that K actually shoots up, okay, to around 2.7 or 2.8, okay. The reason is that, okay, the reason is that actually the length required for that uh, kind of propagating modes to equilibrate, we call it by the thermal equilibration length, okay, this length actually depends on temperature. Okay, so if the if the temperature of your system is lower, then this length is actually longer. Okay, it's actually longer. But uh, when will your system or when will your quantum core edge really achieves a uh, uh, full full equilibration? Is that only when your system length is much longer than the uh, thermal equilibration length? Okay, that's why if you go to lower temperature, then it's become harder and harder for you to have a full equilibration on the edge. Now you can uh, carry out the field theory analysis. I will, I will skip the details. I will just uh, tell you the result, okay? The result is that if you if you look at the possibilities that I showed you before, if it is a pH bargain, if it is a pH bargain, then the edge structure is very, very special. It has one downstream charge, both mole, and then one upstream runner. But you know, you want to couple them, right? That's why the only thing you can write out is like, I always have the uh, downstream mode contribution, and then you know you cannot you cannot simply apply the charge. What you have is the density. That's why it's hard to explain. But now the upstream modes, the operator describing the contribution of the upstream mode will depends on what is the edge structure, right? Let's say for the pH bracket, you only have one upstream myrana, okay? Then the most relevant operator that you can put here is log psi, okay? Psi is log good because psi is the fermionic. Any coupling term must be bosonic, okay? That's why you may think, okay, I can have psi times psi, but low, my one square is identity. That's why you cannot do that. The next thing you can do is actually psi pass over psi, okay? That's why the scaling dimension increases because you have that spatial derivative, okay? That's why you can do the renormalization group analysis and you find that actually, if the edge is pH bargain, then the, the thermal equilibration length actually goes at one over t to the power four. But for all other possibilities, they they have more than one my runner. I mean, I only consider possibility that have uh, upstream mode, okay? If they only have downstream mode, we don't have any uh, issue for equilibration, okay? I only consider possibility with upstream modes. That's why if I go, go beyond uh, pH bargain and then consider other possibility, let's say anti fafian then this operator I can put is Marana, let's say species I times Marana species J. No problem because this one, they don't square to one because they are different Maranas, right? And then this one, the scaling dimension is actually lower than this, okay? You can easily count, okay? This scaling dimension is just one. But this scaling dimension is actually two. Okay? That's why for for pH for for the possibility that that there are a lot of pH fragments, then below this length will goes at one over t square. And then this this one, if you go to lower temperature, right, is clearly this length increases much faster. That's why you must have longer sample. Right? And then another thing is that if you keep your sample the length the same, if you go to lower temperature, then this pH should go much faster than other quantum ball state, which have this LEQ scale with this one, right? And actually, that growth in uh, thermal conductor experiment at 5 half actually is much faster than other film factors. Mm -hmm. That's why it seems like 2.5 support pH volume, this growth also support pH volume, at least on the edge, okay? At this on the edge for the bulk, I don't know. Okay, different possibilities. Is there any way to concretely get some um, values at the temperature scale of the experiment of the thermal equilibrium lens? Exact value, I don't know, but I can tell you experimental value. Mm -hmm. Uh, actually, log in five half. Let's say when people talk about two third, because two third is also a little bit uh, special because they have one downstream both both mode and other upstream both mode, and then if the number of Downstream both small and 
upstream both flow are equal is uh, actually much harder to equilibrate than having different numbers of downstream upstream. And then in that case, if I remember, if I remember I see correctly, okay, in that two third, that equilibration length is around 30 or 40 micron meter. So this can be nice experiment. Yes. So this I mean it's like you need to let's say you can plot out uh I can't remember the exact detail, but yes, you can you can try to fit 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 it out. Yes. Yes, scaling can also be tested experiment. Uh it's not that easy because you also have other other scattering inside, you also have other effects, yeah. But uh, at least uh, we can tell if it is really a pure sharp edge, we expect probably the flow is faster. Yeah. Uh, we we never really see one over T4 in experiment. We never. And another another thing is like you only see several several data points, right? If you can whether you trust it or not, I don't. <laughs> right. If you are just at five points or six points, right? Yeah. Okay. So so I tell you that uh, it may be pH five and edge, but I also tell you different other interpretation. That's why the Weizmann Institute group, they did some uh, follow-up experiments. Okay? The first uh, follow-up experiment they do is like, they consider uh, putting this uh, new equals to two or new equals to three, quote unquote, next to this five part. And then when they do it, then the integer modes are gap out. And then what is left is something like that, okay? So let's say in this uh, interface, okay? Then we only have downstream. That's why you don't expect to have uh, excess noise here. But let's say in this uh, free and five end, then we have this upstream. That's why you expect to have noise, right? Because uh, you kill off this one and then go to the amplifier, right? Yeah. So what is the what is the important thing here is that okay, if you look at these six figures, okay, if it is a uh, five end, okay. In this uh, two and five half interface, you don't have short noise, but in this three five half state, you have. In NI five even the the situation is reversed, right? Because in this in this three five half, uh, you don't have upstream. That's why you don't have excess source noise here. But here you have uh, upstream. That's why you expect to have short noise. But for pH five and edge, okay, there's the special property is that. Uh, in both two five half and three five half interface, there is an upstream. That's why you expect to have ex excess short noise, okay, being detected in both interfaces. And actually, it is the case in experiment. It is the case in the experiment. Okay. That's why another evidence, okay, suggesting that the edge is maybe is pH five. Okay. And then they also carry out the second. <laughs> Follow up experiments and then try to, yeah, yeah, and then they they do the second follow up experiments. In times is running out. Uh, I will tell you what they are doing is they now not measuring the noise, but it's measuring like the uh thermal core inductance of the remaining modes. Okay, it's the same interfaces, right? It's still the five half two and five half three interfaces and then they measure okay they measure the thermal conductances okay but now let's say in the let's say in the uh anti five ion okay this one you have a kind of propagating modes that's why it may be fully equilibrated or loving equilibrate okay that's why it's a value in between 0.5 and 2.5 okay because uh, you may have one minus 1.5 but uh in this experiment they cannot tell positive and negative value that's why 1 and 1.5 when you subtract it is 0.5. But if love wing equilibrates, then what you get is 1 plus 1.5, that, that is 2.5. That's why you expect to have any value in between is 2. If the if the edge is NI5, let's say. Is that okay? But if if the edge is pH 5 ion, then you expect uh in both interfaces, then you will have a bound, let's say, from 0.5 to 1.5. But for anti fafin if you go to the interface five half and three, then you don't expect here to have this value. Okay? You will have a more definite value that is one point five. Okay, but in the experiment, what they measure, they measure in both five half two and five half three interfaces. They get something in between one five and one point five. That's why it's another set of that. Probably the edge is pH fafin. 
And then this one, I think, how to close that. This one is like several days ago on archive, okay? I'm lucky that I check archive every day. <laughs> so it's a, it's a archive uh, several days ago. What they are doing is like for terminal measurement. Now they can separate downstream contribution and upstream contribution for the thermal conductance. And then they measure, okay? And you can see for the downstream, okay? Because uh, all, all possibility have three downstream mode, okay? three downstream mode, right? That's why you see three, right? When they open all, all, all the downstream mode is free. But now the upstream mode, what they get, okay, is 0 0.8, 0 0.8. Okay. So another evidence that probably the edge is pH value. They also do the same. They also did the same experiment at Fuhring factor seven half. Okay, they also see probably the edge is pH five here. Yes, because because uh, seven half it seems like people discuss it low, uh, rarely compared to five half. Seven half is even colder than zero point five. Uh, at least in this experiment, yes. But uh, there are some power contribution they need to take care of. Yeah. Yeah, but I think the message is like, it seems like there are there is an increasing number of experiments showing that the edge, okay, is more like pH Fabian. That's why we probably need to, you know, understand it better why it is the case. But don't ask me about the bulk, okay? As I said, there are different possibilities, okay? That's why it goes to the last part of my talk. What can be done, okay? Let's say if you want to pin down the ratio of the bulk, okay? So what can we do is let's say one of the possibility is you use a polarized Raman scattering. It's like you send, send a photon and then you get another photon out. Mm -hmm. uh, in, so in quantum morph physics, you would talk about the bulk. There is a, uh, a collective excitation. It's called the girlfriend mcdonald Passman mode. This, G this GMP mode is neutral and it's more like creating a pair of positive particle and quasi hole. So depending on the ratio of your quantum hot state, let's say if it is a five ion state, then that GMP mode in the long wave wavelength limit uh, is more like a chiral graviton, okay? Graviton, okay? With a uh, chirality negative two. So if you want to excite it, let's say by this uh, Raman scattering, what you need to do is you need to send, you need to send photon, okay? With, uh, with polarization negative one. And then you need to get back a photon with polarization plus one. That's why you transfer a photon with polarization negative two, such that you can excite this uh, negative two graviton. Okay. But in anti fabian because anti fabian is the particle hole conjugate of the fabian, that's why that uh, GMP mode in the long wavelength limits, okay, that's graviton, the chirality is actually plus two. Okay. That's why if you want to excite this, okay, then what you do is you send a photon with priority plus one, and then you will receive a photon negative one, such that you transfer a plus two, right? Such that you can excite this plus two graph. Okay. Okay, there is a hypo k for zero in Yeah, yeah, it's a hypo. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Long wavelength limit, okay, means that. No, yeah, it's too high of a lambda, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's that's one to be zero. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So how about pH Fabian? pH Fabian, well, you may either see both peaks or you don't see any peak, right? Because it's log particle-like, it's log hole-like, right? That's why it should not have any less chirality for the GMP mode. Okay, that's why if you do this kind of experiment, you shouldn't see a particular peak, let's say plus two or negative two. You may see two peaks or you see low peak, okay. So then you may ask me, okay, how about can I use this one to plot the proposal that having five and anti five domains in the bulk? Uh, it is possible if the wavelength of the light that you send in is smaller than the size of the domain, right? So that's why this one, if okay, if people can do it, then probably it's a way to you know to tell you more about the bulk. Okay. Is there a numerical or a numerical ways to to, to detect the domain mass? 
Uh, new my record, yes. I think, I think, yes. I can show you the paper, yeah. I, I didn't put it here, yes, yes. Yeah, and then another maybe related uh, direction is, can you do internal theometry? But of course, this was very, very challenging because, you know, uh, recently, let's say, uh, people have do some uh, anion collider and then see some more direct evidence for, for anion statistics, let's say, in the laughing state. And then let's say the group, uh, my member at, at Purdue, they do a therapy per rod and then they get a better signal showing one third and two fifth, okay? And then uh, let's say in a Weizmann Institute group, they do another kind of uh, interferometry experiment, it's the Maxander one, and then they do it uh, two fifth, okay? But not five half yet, okay? Not five half yet, okay? So maybe eventually they can do it, okay? And then this one is a theoretical paper. They show that uh, the so-called final factors are uh, different if you have NF5N and H5N. Yeah. But I will skip the details, but just telling you that uh, if you're interested, you can go to this paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Go on. I think you want to direct them, please. Yeah, K goes to C1. Yeah, K goes to C1. Yeah. Yeah, long wavelength limit, right? That's why two pi over lambda. Right. It's a spin to excitation, yes. What, what, what else for the number does it carry? Sorry? What else for the number does it carry? Like charge, any charge? Mm, no charge, right? Because it's like a neutral, it's a collective excitation. It's more like you excite uh, one quasi particle and one quasi hole. That's why it's neutral. Mm. Okay, so you are more expert in that, right? Yeah. Yeah. GMP. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. What's the, what's the condition that graph will show up? Like oh, I see. It's not, it's not the graph showing up. It's like, uh, it's like if you look at, let's say, the absorption spectrum, something like that, which what peak will you see if you use a different, different polarization of photon when you shoot it there? Because what you want to do is that you want to excite this graviton, right? Let's say if the graviton is priority minus two, then you want to transfer a photon to polarization minus two. That's why you send minus one and then you want to receive plus one, such that you transfer minus two to excite this. Or are you asking another thing, sorry? Oh, this one, this one. Okay, here I focus on Fafian and anti -Fafian. Okay, So this one is for Fafian, this one is for anti -Fafian. But in general, this also holds, let's say in the Laughlin state, at filling factor one third, okay? The GMP mode in the long wave language limit, it behaves at chirality negative two graph time. But let's say if you take the particle conjugate of that u equals one third, you go to two third, then that GMP mode, okay? In the long wave length limit, it behaves as plus two graph time. Yeah, generally, generally holds. And also for learning, for learning, for ผมก็ไม่ได้ที่ไหนที่ผมที่ผมที่ไหนส่วนเดียวกันก็จะให้ผมมาดูเลยเช่นเดียวกันที่เราดูการรู้ที่เป็นเราดูการรู้ที่เ
kind of composite filaments to pair up and then show you some non-Ethereum fractional quantum anomalous ball state. Possible? I don't know. I'm not an expert in this direction, but I find this question interesting. Mm -hmm. Another one, as I spend most of my talk, okay, of reviewing things, I think it's fair enough. I just spend one slide, okay, for advertisement of my results, okay? So let's say we talk about more with edge. Actually, this morning we discussed this. Uh, Actually, you can realize the supersymmetry on the edge. Uh, another group of uh, people, they also show that, let's say you focus on more state and then look at the bulk, the GMP mode and the neutral fermion mode, they, they are also supersymmetric patterns. Okay. So it seems like five half stay or it's related topological orders, there are very, very rich physics, right? You have gravitons, you have anions, you have Lonebian anions, you have supersymmetry, Basically everything, okay. Basically everything. Yeah, maybe you can also have a black hole information paradox, okay, which I actually wrote a paper, but I don't think I, 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 just, I don't think it's a good idea to advertise my work too much. And then if I need to advertise everything, probably you need to invite me three times, right, to give free talk, okay. If you invite me, I will come because I have free lunch and free dinner. So. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, yeah, and then the other related question is like uh, in the numerics, as I said, okay, when you increase the Landau level mixing parameter, actually there is a phase transition they observe, and then let's say uh, at uh, Landau level parameter around one, they see a anomalous uh, threshold compost state, claim anomalous state, okay, then they also claim, okay, because uh, this uh, car part is about one, is it the state that really describes the experimental setup? If that's true, is that a normal state correspond to pH 5 n or, or uh, anti 5 n 5 n domain? So this is uh, one of the uh, conclusions they made. And then uh, after that, uh, Steve Simon uh, put a comment, probably this is just like phase separation or bubble or stride formation. Yeah. Which one is correct? I don't know. Yeah, but I just want to, you know, introduce you that they are still developing, you know, developing uh, investigations. Yeah, yeah. And then for the ratio of seven half, as I also uh, tell you, is like also told you is that several days ago, uh, that experiment suggests that probably the edge is also pH Fabian like. Okay, so then we can also ask the same question as the five half. Actually, what happens there? Right. And then not only, not only. Five half is the even denominator fractional compost state we observe. Actually, one fourth, okay? One fourth in different uh, uh, materials. Let's say in garden arsenal, if the quantum well is not wide, actually you see gap state. But if the quantum well is wide enough, you, you see gap state. And then again, it's very similar to five half state, you have different possibilities. Uh, one of them is, let's say, the hyphen 553. And then you also have uh, different possibilities coming from how you pair up those now not two flux composite fermions, but four flux composite fermions. That's why you may also get five n and have five n, get five n, etc. But and then numerically, people find that probably it's more like this parton state. This parton state is the F wave pairing state. But for the five n, as I said, it's like P wave pairing. For pH five n, it's also P. And then uh, again. Uh, several days ago, okay, several days ago, uh, they also observed another system that has uh, one fourth flexible compound, but now it's not in wide garden resonance quantum well, but in uh, ultra high quality whole system, okay. The quantum well is locked at, is locked at Y, okay. And then uh, there is a numerical paper, uh, I think by Javinja Jane Group, okay, um, suggesting that probably this strong Landau level mixing. Why is it strong? Because uh, the effective mass of the hole is actually much larger than the effective mass of the electron in garden mass line. That's why the Landau level mixing is much stronger. That's why in that numerical paper, they, they, they propose probably this uh, stronger Landau level mixing may favor say F wave pairing state, something like that. Yeah. So you see, there is still many questions that you can ask, right? Yeah. So I am completely over one. Yeah. So let me end my talk by saying that. As I mentioned, the five half state, uh, you have anions, you have Lonebian anions, probably, you have uh, 
different possibilities. You may also have like graviton, you may also have supersymmetry. And then I can't remember who told me that probably the wave function, okay, of the universe is described by a laughing state. Don't ask me who tell me, okay? I cannot remember, okay? But if I want to generalize this statement, I will probably say the wave function of the US probably is a more risk state because you can have you can have more things. Yeah. But don't take it in serious, okay? It's a joke, okay? <laughs> so that's the end. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, any questions? Wow, uh, there are many chats. <laughs> <laughs> Some yeah, you are. Yeah. Yeah, basically all the audiences they know flexible compound much better than me. Okay. So, okay, so it's a no question. Thanks, uh, thanks, Kamal, oh, again for the thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. <laughs> yeah. So you do want to talk about black hole?